Main screen turn on. Hi there, I'm Jan, this is Gerrit, and we're doing a review of the Nokia N9. This is going to be fast, quick fire, because to try and get this thing in, in a decent amount of time so that you will want to watch it, uh, we're going to have to talk quickly, because this is unlike anything we've ever reviewed before, probably unlike anything we're ever going to review again. There's a lot to say about the hardware, there's a lot to say about the software, stuff about the software that we can usually skip in Android. So, let's delve right into it. First, let's talk about the exterior of the device. It looks sexy. Look yeah, at this thing. Yeah, it does. Look at this thing. I mean, there is no button on the front face. The, the 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 glass just the the whole way this thing is designed um, is is designed to make you want it the the glass is slick everything about this device is is curved in all the right places um, it just looks so good <laughs> <laughs> then all right so um, you got a speaker on the bottom on the top is where you charge it you've got your headphone jack you've got your um, You've got your USB charging port over here, and over here is your SIM tray. But guess what kind of SIM you have to oh, put in there? No. It's a micro SIM. Oh, it's a micro SIM. Yes. All right. So uh, that's. Um, I mean, a lot of folks say that the micro SIM is great. Uh, maybe this is a you know a chance for the micro SIM to get some uh, uptake with Nokia getting on the on in the action, and maybe this is a sign of things to come. But uh, micro SIM. Yeah. So I had to have yeah. my SIM swapped in order to use this thing. Then on the side, you've got your standard. Um, you've got your standard stuff, except that the power button sits on the side. That's where you'd usually see it on a Samsung device, maybe. It's by the thumb. Yeah, a little bit up, maybe. Clever. And uh, standard volume rocker. That is it, as far as buttons go. Okay, just sorry to interrupt you. What is this? Okay, that looks like it's the front-facing camera. So, uh, yep, they've put the camera at, the, to at the, the bottom edge, it looks like. Why? Beats me. I mean, uh, the, the way it looks, uh, and, you know, it could very well have uh, fitted along the, the, the top corners, which is where you'd expect the front-facing camera. Yeah. But uh, no, that's not what they've done. They've put it down there. Now, the first thing people struggle with when they get this device, and this is probably the most counterintuitive thing of it, is when it's locked, what do you do? Because you push the power button, then you hit this screen. And so people are, are trying to swipe it away, and, and they can't figure out how to do it. And what you have to do is you have to swipe from an edge. And there you see sometimes it doesn't register. Uh, that's the only complaint I've got there. But other than that, once you've got that basic gesture down, this device works like a charm. And it's a pattern that I hope to see on many devices to come. So you swipe from the edge to basically do anything. If you're in an app, then you swipe from an edge and it takes you back to, the, to wherever you were. So in this case, I was at the app drawer and you can see there's a little bit of lag. Yeah, a little bit I've got a lag. lot of apps open at the moment for this review. And so you can see some latency coming through. Um, so... It doesn't kill them automatically. Uh, no, no. It, it does when it runs out of RAM, they say. It's one of the problems that they had to solve using Mego. That's what this device runs, is a version of Mego. And, uh, and so at this stage, everything that I've launched is still open, even the music app that I opened up to connect this thing to my, to my car on the way through. Talking about the music, this headphone jack, now I've picked up a very interesting problem with this. I've got an aux in in my car, and that cable works fine. But when I connect anything but the Nokia headset, it doesn't work. I've tried a BlackBerry headset, I've tried a Logitech headset, yeah. and it doesn't work. I've had that problem with, uh, with another couple of phones before I can't recall which ones, but yeah. I don't understand. I don't know why. It's a very it's strange a, type I mean, of it's problem. It's supposed to be a standard port, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, now, that aside, I think you've got the specs open. Maybe we should jog through them quickly. It's an AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, which is pretty cool, at 480 by 854, Gorilla Glass, anti-glare polarizer, which is interesting to me. How does that handle in sunlight? This thing handles beautifully in sunlight, and I could tell that it was polarized glass because I've recently bought a, po a pair of polarized sunglasses, yeah. and when I look at the device, it's got that weird polarization reflection okay. when I look at it through my sunglasses, so very, very interesting. Okay. So CPU, GPU, what have we got? Uh, CPU is a TI OMAP 3630. It's a 1 gigahertz Cortex-A8. And GPU is a Power VR SGX 530. Yeah, so I could definitely tell internals. that the graphics acceleration worked well. And uh, RAM and storage? Uh, storage, 1664 gigs of storage and one gig of RAM. Okay, this so is a 16 gig model. Um, and when I turned it on, I had about 12 gigs of addressable space. And it's no slouch, so it does exactly what I want. So the guys that have, uh, if you've been able to, to look at what I'm doing um, uh, on the lock screen, uh, you don't have to push the power button to unlock. You can double tap on the screen, and that brings up the lock screen like that. And on the lock screen, you'll have a bunch of notifications, which you can slide out. So this is uh, my mail. And you can see the timeout happening there fairly quickly. And you can oh. click on the mail, and you can see it dragging across, which is actually a neat uh, visual feedback thing to get it up and running. 
So that's your mail. The mail reader I found acceptable. Um, it it wasn't fantastic. Um, it it actually some of the some of the the um, mails I get from mailing lists don't come through properly. Um, that's How do you mean? That's one uh, gripe I had. The mail just simply doesn't show. It's blank. Um, now, uh, just, just to give you an idea of what these guys have done with the user interface, let me set this alarm. So here you can see like very interesting user interface design choices. So um, you've got a polar clock in order to set your, your devices. It's not the usual tumblers yeah. that you expect to see in other um, operating systems. So you've got that. Um, and, and just in general, the user interface of this device is a pleasure. Now... To, to get to some of my gripes with this thing, it, it comes bundled with, with uh, Nokia Avi Maps. And what's cool about that compared to other mapping products is that you can download the maps for all flight news, right? But I go over to Munich, and I know that I'm not going to be able to get a SIM card in time in order to use my data, my, you know, to, to use a data plan in order to use Google Maps. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use my Nokia. I get there, or, or I download the Munich Maps before I get there. Getting a GPS lock without assisted GPS helping out takes ages. It takes ages because obviously I took off in Oslo, landed in Munich, and then the GPS had no clue where no to even begin looking. Were. So it took, it took me probably the, the better part of 30 minutes just to get a GPS lock. And then I went indoors, lost the lock, and I couldn't get the lock back. Uh, they've got support for a huge number of accounts. Now, I'm not going to show you which accounts I've got installed. This isn't how you'd usually enter the accounts menu. What I showed you there was my recently opened apps list. You remember that I opened the clock? Yeah. And you can see when I, when I swipe, that's my most that was my most recently used app. And you can also pinch to zoom and scroll through that list. And even when it's in the full grid view, you can scroll through that list. So let's take a look at some of these accounts. Mail for Exchange is what I had to use in order to hack my Gmail on here. You can't, um, it's got no, uh, it's got a Google account support, but that but doesn't deliver Gmail. Gmail through there. Oh, um, so I had to use Mail for Exchange to get that working. Built in Skype support, Facebook, Twitter, you need your Nokia account for music maps and other stuff. CalDAV, if you use that. Flickr, another mail account which I use for Pop. Picasa, SIP calls, built in SIP client. Slick as hell. That is something that you get in uh, on, on Android, not something that you'd expect here, and it's, and it's here. And YouTube. Complaint here, I can only have one Twitter account, and I manage three on a medium day. Um, so that, <laughs> that's, that's my biggest gripe um, with that. But like out of the box, it supports a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know how pluggable this is. I haven't had a chance to play with the SDK. So I don't know if I've got a third-party service, if I can plug into their account system mm -hmm. like you can on Android. All right, so um, that's it for accounts. I want to talk a bit about the browser because it grates my cheese. This is probably one of, one of the worst smartphone browsers I've used in a long <laughs> time, and, and um, maybe barring the previous BlackBerry browser. <laughs> and um, what happens here is I'm in our forum at the moment, the My Broadband Look at Forum. all that checkerboard. Yeah. Why, why, why does it do that? And I that's mean, a loaded page. Yes. Uh, and you, you watch me load this beforehand. I don't, I don't know why it does that. Um, it just seems strange. I th maybe it's because I've got so many apps open in the background. It's cleaning up the RAM. I don't know. Th that is probably not the worst problem. The worst problem is now I want to reply to something. I want to type in something. I want to log into a service. So I, cl I click to bring up the keyboard. Now, I've already brought up the keyboard. So let me, let me click off to get rid of the keyboard. It does that. Every single time it zooms in. Zooms in. So now, okay, so now, now I'm, let's, let me zoom out. So now I can zoom out and I can still type. I can do my thing. You can see it jumps around, also irritating. So now let's go landscape. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Explode. Checkerboard. I'm zoomed back in. It's tedious to work with. Um, so I see anything. I, I pray for Opera Mini support. I pray for Opera Mini support because that's not in the, the app store from what I could see. Um, or Opera Mobile. So yeah. talking about the App Store, that is probably this device's biggest failing. Um, or not biggest failing, but its biggest hindrance. Is Nokia, this, this could have been the device that Nokia launches to say, we are back in this. Like Android and, and, and iOS in particular have given us a licking, but we, we kept on kicking. And this is what we've brought to the table. We've brought a whole new pattern to the smartphone business. Completely different user interface. I mean, with the, the, swipe, the swipe from any edge thing is, is brilliant. Um, a little Easter egg they've got in there is um, you can swipe and hold, and that brings up a little shortcut menu. Oh. They don't really advertise that. Um, is that I customizable mean, at all? No, and that's why they don't. Okay. This is, it's sort of a feature they've popped in, but it's, it's something that still needs a bit of development. Um, and, and now the problem is that you go to the store and nothing that you want is in there. 
maybe one or two things. Like I've got Foursquare installed and, and you know, a couple of basics, but no WhatsApp, even though WhatsApp has a Symbian app and they all talk about how easy it is to port Qt to, to from one platform to the next. To the yeah. other. Because this runs cute and they make a big deal of it. Their maps app is cute. Yeah. And so, the music. Yeah. So it's all cute based. So and uh, but they couldn't and we asked them, you know, can't you just convince the WhatsApp guys? Because WhatsApp in particular is a huge thing in South Africa. Mm. It's a huge thing for me. And um, they just said no. Um, you know, they, they they talk but the guys don't have the in house skills or the resources in order to, to, to commit to, yes. to to the to the platform. And this is the inherent problem with Migo. It seems like a once off and Nokia is refusing to talk about the future plans for the platform. Yeah, keeping everything quiet. And so developers are going, you know, you know, if I if I've got a cute app and I can just hit recompile for me go and upload it and it works great if i can't i'm not going to bother yeah you know um and, and maybe they could pay some guys to develop apps but other than that um i wanted to just show some stuff this device has nfc support so um there are ways to get to category views and um then you can actually tell them that you want to see um, an NFC application. So that's actually quite cool. You, you've got these collections, navigation, NFC apps, games, audio, video, um, and so on and so forth. So that's actually quite cool. And that's, to give you an idea, those are the NFC supported applications. That's yeah, it. A whole four. Yep. Poken, by the way, is a South African development. I just want to give the guys a plug while I'm busy. So that's the Nokia Amigo. It is uh, the Nokia N9. It is, it is a device with so much promise. And it's just been let down by Nokia's long-term strategy. Or at least their silence of the long-term strategy. Yep. One last thing that's probably worth noting is the, the camera on the back. Um, I've done some test shots with it. Um, sorry, I flipped it over there even though the uh, exposure is not set correctly. But um, the, the, that camera in low light, it's grainy as hell. It is really, really terrible. Yeah, it's so um, on the specs. That's an 8 megapixel camera. Yeah, and 8 megapixels are fine. I yeah. mean, it's not the N8 13 megapixel camera. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it stacks up to the Galaxy S2, yeah, the iPhone yeah. 4S. So, so uh, I, I guess what the, I'm, I'm ending this off by saying that the Nokia N9 is one of the devices I, I'm, I'm most excited about that, that I've, I've, got such, uh, I've got such great things to say about it. It's just a fantastic experience all around. And yet the disappointments, the N8 that came before it, um, you, you had a USB host. You could plug flash disks and stuff in. You had HDMI outputs. You had a massive camera on the back. Yeah. And it retailed for less. It, when it launched in South Africa, it retailed for less. What's the retail on this guy? 5999 recommended retail. Yo. It's just so expensive. And minimalist is cool, but then give me a discount. Yeah, agreed. All right, so with that, Nokia 9, very promising. If all you want is a well-rounded smartphone and don't worry too much about external applications, this phone will probably not disappoint you unless you want to use the camera in low light. Thank you very much for watching.